G'day everybody, welcome to the Opal Mills channel. I'm going to do some treating. And these are my victims. Uh, some of you will recognise. Uh, these were two triangular sort of pieces that got cleaned up into a pair. They were cooked already just to see the flashes. So that'll go black again. Except for the uh, white parts there, these, this stuff will go black again and look like this one. This one I didn't have to take too much off. I was had it faced that way because of a nice flash in there. And then I didn't realize that this was the other side. A little bit more color and interest. So I've faced this side too. Giving that good polish. It's got a little bit of a mark there, but nature of the beast with the Andamuka matrix. So he's gonna get another treat and see what happens there. So none of the, or those two pieces have been treated, but rub right back. That one's been treated and is pretty much treated still. The others have not been treated yet. So to start off the treatment, First and foremost, you need to make up a sugar solution, which I've already pre-done from some other cooks. And I'm gonna try something new with this one. And I'm putting some black oxide powder in with the mix. See if any of that'll make it in there too. Help do the job. <coughs> Excuse me. And so it's as easy as just mixing up sugar in water. Uh, you don't want it too diluted but you do want it diluted enough that you allow for some moisture to be lost during the heat process and you may have to come back and top it up a bit over the next couple of days which is what it will take to get this to absorb so i've had these sitting out in the sun just to uh, dry them right out it's a nice warm day outside and they'll go straight into the sugar solution sit there for a couple of days and unless the black oxide powder gets in there, you won't really notice anything in the sugar. Um, even if I started off with a fresh brush of sugar, no oxide powder, it would be a bit clearer. You could see the stones go in, yeah, whatever. It's not that much to see as far as importance. So it's just a case of taking these, not splashing it, but just dropping them in. Try not to touch the opal too much and get your finger grease all over it. So I'm touching the edges if possible so the face doesn't which is the main part, it doesn't get to, I'll just tip the rest of these in like this. There. So that's it. That's part A for treating. Part B will come when these come out in a couple of days and you could either put them in an oven to bake them very carefully, um, raising the temp temperature in increments so you don't just give it a shock change in temperature because that's the problem with heat and opal it doesn't like a sudden change in temperature or too high a temperature. So you slowly increment it up and all that sort of thing. But I don't do it in the oven because I ended up blowing out more than I've got. <laughs> so I've got some uh, sulfuric acid, um, uh, which I'll head off to do after this and go get that in there. But again, that's just another black solution. You won't see anything in it. You're not gonna see a reaction of bubbles and froth and nothing it just sits in there and slowly carbonizes the sugars that get into the matrix pores so what's happening is uh, the, the opal is porous it has gaps micro fine little gaps which have probably got just air in them at the moment and less moisture is in there which i've dried them out and hopefully they're all hollow so doing this hopefully that air sometimes these will just little fine little bubbles can raise to the surface as it heats up and forces expanding the uh, air inside to heat up and then when it cools down a bit so you spike it every now and then um, it sort of sucks it in and then expels more air sucks more in so that's that's the process and hopefully you do it right or you might have to do another cook so this can take a week to months or to a month depending on how many cooks you feel you need to do so what you're looking at, not exciting. We're just going to put the lid on and I'll bring you back in a couple of days for this one when we pull it out and go on further. All right, so this is a couple of days later. It's been cooking in the uh, whew, bit of steam there. Uh, oxide and sugar mix. Oxide's something I'm trying new. Turn this off now. I've got a glove on left hand just in case I have to come in contact with it. A, because it's hot. B, because you don't want to get your finger oil on it. Uh, I've got a 
paper towel just to get some drip, excess dripping off and this just to sit them on so I can take them out and put them in the fresh acid so let's go for a fishing trip somewhere in there somewhere just gotta find them this could take a little while Scrape all the stones up this end. I can feel them hitting the. Sorry, just scraping all the stones up this end. I can feel them hitting the uh, tweezers. So there we go. What have we got here? Let's go for the big one first. Maybe. Maybe not. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this is like one of those childish games. Where I had it then. There we go. Got him. Oh, sh. All right. Going to try for another method. I'll find something else to scoop these out with. This is ridiculous. Dun, dun, dun. Big spoon. All right. <laughs> Set on the brochure to be easier. Oh, we've got something here. Don't fall in, spoon. It's definitely a little black stuff. Um, T6, I'm gonna grab my goggles. So you can see this a bit better. Okay, so a lot of that's gonna be the stuff stuck on the outside. So just give it a light little dab off, not too much. You can pick it up with this hand. This will be set with the sides enclosed, but there we go. That's how far that went into that one. And it's gone that dark already. Redarkened, re because it did lighten up. This piece has already been treated. And I did polish it right back up and it did fade a bit. So it's actually taken a really, I think a lot of that oxide in. So this will be really interesting how well this new acid reacts and cooks and I'm hoping to get a super result, to be honest. If I don't, is what it is, or I'm doing something wrong and I should give it up. But anyway, there's one. I'm gonna get that big one out. like this and straight onto the paper. Alright, wow. I some of this will come off, but I think a lot of it did take in. Unreal result, this one. So this is lightly dabbing. I don't want this paper to stick to it, but you can see there's way too much excess on the outside. So it's okay to clean it up a bit. And wow, if you remember when that went in, Unreal. Oh, I can't wait till that's cooked. That's gonna look, yeah, like it should. Awesome. Just gonna keep them separated. So, I might just keep this bit short and just, you know, I'll fish this bit out. This 
This is the other one of those, the first one that came out. There we can do a pair of earrings, if you remember. Hopefully. Well, really took in not quite as well as the other one, but it did. And it's it's not even, yeah, not even been acid treated yet. It's just the sugar and the oxide, black oxide powder from any hardware store that you just mix it with your concrete to mix your mortar mix color. So I'll pause this and I'll come back in a sec with a whole pile and we'll go out and put them in the acid. Um, yep. Yeah. All right, there we go. All picked out. I'll try not to touch them. Try to move them around a bit, but they will slide. Not too much you can see right now. You can see the glints of colour. You can tell there's colour there. And I hope it will contrast a lot more once treated and turn black around it. Especially these one, two, three, four, five. Really keen to see how they take. These are all from the same rock, and those are from, well, same rock, but yeah, different layer. They're green and more red. These five are greenish, and these three are the reddish. So, here's the part where I've got to say, I will not encourage anyone to just jump in and start treating with acid. Uh, find someone who knows what they're doing, if you can. Uh, join a club, find out from them. Um, or you're on your own. Um, as far as I'm not going to sit here and teach what you should and shouldn't do whilst playing with this stuff, um, including not calling it playing with. <laughs> You've got to take it very serious. Um, I'll be, I'll just put music on while I put this in. Um, I've got no time to be distracted and I'll talk after. But it'll be going into a, a clear liquid that is slightly discolored, it's not like water clear. Um, but you can see into it, not a problem, and you will see these go in. Um, and I will have all my safety gear on, not a problem. And we're outside where we're gonna be doing this, so that'll be very well ventilated in a safe area. Let's see him back out for a sec. Here's the jar that will go, be going in, uh, into another jar that's got the acid in. So here's my little, um, if anyone's got a Dremel, and you just want to practice what you're doing, <laughs> you can do stuff to, you know, same, same substance basically as opal, probably a bit harder, um, some tempered stuff is in, but it's glass, it's silica. So what you can do to opal, you could do to this. Um, so I make my own homemade little beaker set, <laughs> science lab equipment. Uh, the glass is the main thing and yeah, this will help drain the acid out to take these out. Then I neutralize it in the bicarb soda and leave it in there for a good soak too. Then just dip it in, stop the fizz and take it out. You gotta make sure that um, solution gets right into all the acid that's soaked right. Oops, now I've got that stuck to my finger. Acid that gets into these, you've gotta make sure you neutralize or someone will be wearing it around their neck one day and uh, end up with a big red rash and some pain maybe, some slight burning. So they have to be well rinsed afterwards. Um, so I'm all set up to do this, not a problem. Um, I'm not doing a how-to guide as far as, you either know what you're doing with these acids before you even attempt to do this on your own, and then I'll just show you what I'm doing to do it in the acid. There we go. So I do not advocate for anyone just jumping in and going down, grab some acid, it's not that easy anyway. Um, and just playing around. It's not, yeah, not something you wanna get wrong. So, that being said, bit of a disclaimer, be careful people who trim this. <laughs> some may already know what they're doing and talking about and probably laughing at me a bit, but I'm just trying to negate any fallout. <laughs> so, I'm going to be doing this and this is how I do things. So we'll go put these in and I'll film it. And if there's, yeah, I haven't seen it go in clear, so I don't know what it looks like, what, what happens when it goes in either. We'll find this out together.
Okay, so that's all settled in. This is a bigger reaction as we're starting to see the plumes of black. Uh, um, sulfuric acid is going to get into the stone, do its job carbonizing it and react, and it's going to give off uh, obviously that result. That's what turns it all black in the end, and you just cannot see into it. So, this is what it looks like in a fresh batch. So, in there, whatever is absorbed in there that reacts with the sulfuric acid and carbonizes and doesn't wash back out uh, is what the treatment's about. So I'm going to let that do its thing and I'll come back out every now and then we'll have another look. That looks really cool the way those, let's see if I can get down here a bit for you. Those plumes like smoke rising. That's how it's cool. Get it back a bit here. There we go. So there you go, that's what it looks like. It's not gonna bubble and fizz and carry on, but she's going black and that's the main thing. And we give it time. So this is out in the sunlight in a alley, uh, stainless steel sink, which creates a fair bit of heat. In Australia, sorry, I just cut the video off. And um, yeah, that I will be getting a heating plate so I can continue this overnight. Otherwise it just comes out during the day goes away at night so there we go I'll come back a few hours hour something when I remember and uh, come and get some more shots so I've just come out so about a half an hour later it seems to be getting pretty dark in there not sure how much visibility we'll get out of it so I'll just be yeah wait until Wait until tomorrow afternoon, maybe. Give it a good yeah, 30 odd hours. Soak and check it. So I'll just come back then. I don't think we'll be able to see much in a few hours. All right, next morning, just about to go get this out sitting in the sun. And I realize why it looks the way it does. So the uh, holes are at the bottom of that inner jar. And the top of the jar is poking up out through the top there. So nothing can get out over the top. All the uh, opal in that inner jar is discolored. And all the outside is still clear because it hasn't gone down through the hole and into the outside of the inner jar. So that's why this looks the way it does. But you can sort of see glimpses of the color and the opal in there and what it is in isn't doing. I'm just going to quickly do is lift the inner jar, draining it into the other one, then lower it again. All that black's draining out into the clear stuff now. A quick peek of the opal. will go black in it anyway. All right, back in. So we've got the camera work here. I'll slowly sink back down. It gives it a bit more fresher mix. So yeah, all right, we'll go put this out like this. So, and probably get it out. And I might leave it until tomorrow morning. We'll see what happens. Okay, it's been sitting out for uh, another day in the heat. Might just quickly lift this. See what we can see so far. I'm gonna leave it until morning though. 
Today's Thursday night. Might as well have another soak overnight. It'll still react. Just not as fast. But every little bit counts at the moment. Wow. I don't know if you can see it in there. Some of that's darkened really well at the bottom there. It's not going to focus. That greens. There we go, hold it there. Anyway, I'll leave that go back in. See what that little bit extra does overnight. <laughs> I'm really impressed with that so far though. Can't wait to get it out, clean it up and see what stays on there. Some of that could be carbonized and just stuck on the outside and it'll just wipe the black straight off. Uh, but I think most of that's penetrated in quite well. I'm impressed. So yeah, I'll leave that for now. And uh, come back in the morning. Hey, good morning. And I'm just getting set up with my other glove. They won't, fingers won't work through the gloves trying to press play on the phone. <laughs> um, so here we are, got a big bucket full of uh, bicarb soda. About to take out the treasure. <laughs> um, yeah, I probably won't talk, I'll just leave this recording and just do this here. So here we go. I'm gonna hold it over just in case, which I don't expect any. But in case drips do occur. And I also want it over the bicarb soda. Once it's finished draining. Just try and keep the hands out of the way there. Make sure how much of this you can see. Sorry, I'm a bit off camera, I can't watch. So just bear with. Gonna let that drip dry. Well, drip out as much as possible. All the excess, waste not, want not. Loop. Now, here's where it gets neutralized. A bit of fizzing, as you can see. So I'll just slowly put this in because I don't want to create mass amounts of temperature, uh, which is what will happen with sulfuric acid and water mixed, it causes great temperature. Never get your water or bicarb into the uh, acid. Always the acid goes into the water. Uh, same as chlorine. You never add water to chlorine. You add the chlorine to the water, otherwise the reaction is violent. So as I put this in, you'll see it start to fizz up more. And if too much heat was created, I don't know what it would do to my glass jar. So I just really want to take it slow. So just going to fizz and fizz. Cleaning the outside, slowly filling up on the inside, neutralizing the stones at the same time. You can see in there, that fizzy. It's definitely not carbonating <laughs> the water, but reacting with it. So this is why you definitely need to be out in a uh, ventilated area like I am. I've got the wind to my back, so it's blowing this straight away from me. As long as it doesn't turn, I'm right. There we go. That last bit of fizz out. You can imagine it's going to micro fizz a bit more because the stone, stones have absorbed. I'm not sure if I can get this on camera. The stones have absorbed the acid, so the acid's still inside the stones being neutralized. I'm not sure if you'll see there. Oops. Put the water everywhere. There's still micro fine bubbles coming up and out. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to show it. So until they stop, you really don't want to be handling them. Stick my head in the way, sorry. 
Uh, so I'm just going to leave them in there. Actually, I'm going to tip them out of there and let them float around. And just leave that glass in there. We'll give that a few minutes. Um, and then, yeah, come back. So I'm just going to run a bit of around the outside of this jar just to make sure no drips came out the outside of the container. That's pretty good. Lid back on, tight seal. Okay, so I'll come back in a sec. I'm gonna have to turn this off with my nose. Okay, they've been soaking here for about half an hour. Just gonna go put them in some fresh water to get the uh, bicarb soda off of the stones. This is an amazing result. I really can't wait to show you up close. The uh, five little ones could not have turned out any better than I had imagined. They really darkened up really well. Phenomenally well. Sorry, I hope you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. Um, so yeah, there we go. We'll take those in and have a look. All right, there we go. So this had a lot of black already in it, this one. Um, but I think it's darkened up and done this side, yeah, definitely a lot more. this dry off so we can see it. Should, should still retain its polish. Get this water off. There we go. So this is the finished stone. Oops, still a layer there. This was the original side which yeah, it might still be yet. Let's see whichever face is best up this way be just reversible I think this is more of a test piece this one <laughs> as well let's see how it went and so I like that as a pendant stone so yeah that one's sort of not much change but a bit these two were quite lightened up and wow they really took a treatment all the way through all the porous stuff Colour stands out so much better there. Interesting little stones, little pattern. So I'll make a nice set of earrings. I'll go with the pendant. Now here we go with these little five. This one, I'll start off with the worst of them. <laughs> Didn't take too much on this side for some reason. I might just give this one another treatment in case it was maybe resting on other stones or something, I don't know. But that was a bit of a mixed breed looking stone. Still looks nice, I might leave it like that. So here we go, start with a little one. Unreal. The color that these were, quite white. Now that color is standing out so much more the black background so this is why we treat um, as a clearly as a better looking stone now than before and now it might be actually worth something compared to before it was just yeah what can you do with it it's just a white stone unless it gets wet and hits the light the right way you won't see anything but now unreal very happy yeah, this nice little oval Again, beautiful treatment on that. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Success. So, <laughs> was it the fresh acid or was it the oxide powder? Uh, from the condition it went in to the acid, definitely the acid. Oxide powder may have played a bit of a role, but definitely the fresh acid's done that greater job on those. Now with just one cook on these as opposed to these that have been through a couple of times. This is just the one time, unreal. 
And lucky last, nice flash. Check that out now. You just couldn't, I mean, it was there, but you couldn't see it like contrasted so much like it is now. And so, yeah, now it's definitely gonna look good in the ring, not a problem. Even a pendant maybe, but leave the back open. <laughs> Even the ring, I'd leave the back open. Waste of flash there if you don't. <laughs> and you're taking your ring off and you turn it upside down as you take it off or whatever, and you catch a flash. Yeah, it's always good. Some people set a diamond on the underneath just for aesthetics. But anyway, awesome result. I am so pleased. I will get straight on to the rest of that and start cutting away. And now I know what I'm going to end up with. Um, I've just got to be able to see the flashes without it being treated. So I know. And that's where the goggles come in. I can see right up close on the great imagination I've got. I can picture what should be. So that's why I just went ahead and cut these and ended up with a nice flash there. So I could see that already. So I'll do the rest that way. That way I don't have to treat them, see which way it's gonna face. So I, I can see which way it's gonna face. It's not like the uh, this stuff. Uh, this is a very porous matrix. That's the stuff that went really, really black. You can see a bit of color in there. But you can't really tell how it's gonna face. So that's the kind of stuff you need to treat just to see which way it's gonna go. But with this stuff, I'll just quickly bring it back here. And it's kind of obvious what color's there already. If any. So this would be another one like that. That one. Might take a little bit more actually. So it's lower down in the stone near the bottom really. And it's got more of the impurities matrixy. So you can see those lines of blue, red, blue, red. Geez, that'd be a nice face. A nice zebra blue and red stripe, purple and red stripe. I think I've got more of that face, but oh, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, but I can see all the flashes, so avoid that little line there. Get a nice stone out of there. It's a bit purpley over here, I'd still get a stone. Um, yeah, the rest of that, it's weak color, but that will stand out a lot more once treated. So to go from this to that is what the goal is. And I'm really impressed with that. <sighs> I was kind of fearing that I have no idea what I'm doing in the end and failed. <laughs> so this is great. Uh, hope you're enjoying seeing this. Uh, again, I'm not advocating that you rush out and do it with the acid. Um, be very, very careful, whatever you do, do. Um, but yeah, there we go. And over last week, <laughs> skyrocketed we're at like 200 subscribers now guys like you guys are quite a group i never knew that i'd have the attention of this many people to be honest um and hold them so you're doing great um all the way on on the way to getting a uh, a live stream happening that's that's for sure so thank you very much everyone and also my store so on with the store um it's up and running. I haven't got any rough parcels listed yet. I'm gonna go through that today. I'll probably show you in a sec some things that I was thinking of. Uh, I'd have to get some, <laughs> some rough that I haven't gone through and just left what I don't want because that's not much chop for you guys. But what I don't want is great for beginners. So I'll, I'll have a few parcels of just beginner stuff up. Um, don't get too excited guys it's just more of a uh, starter to get some people going i'll have to wait till i get to andamuka again and i'll be on the hunt for some not just what i want but what you guys will want um i've just got to be able to afford it all i'm sort of running thin at the moment getting all this cranking um need to make a sale <laughs> so yeah uh i suppose i better bring this in now I had an idea just to do another thank you and sort of announce my shop. 
Um, got a bit of a parcel put together. <coughs> Excuse me, coming back. Let's get some water. So what I've put together here is out of those bags of shrapnel that I showed you um, in another video. Um, just bits and pieces. Don't get too excited. You, as a beginner, you're probably going to love it. Um, as someone who's never touched the stuff before as such, and just getting into it and not too sure and spending money and um, messing it all up and going broke. Uh, beginner's parcels aren't meant to make you big dollars. They're meant to get you used to what you're doing and then you go and invest the dollars and make more dollars. That'd be the uh, logic behind that, unless you just get a bargain. So in here's, uh, start at the crappy end, excuse my French, um, just some bits of potch, solid potch, no color at all. Don't get excited, big chunks, but yeah. So that will be more to practice with. Um, I've got an idea of what I'm gonna do with one of these and I'll try and Try and get that done um, by simply, yeah, I was going to get a, yeah, probably a piece like this one and figure out a cube in there and make a little dice. Dremel some dots for the holes and just cheaply with a bit of super glue, get some little tiny bits and inlay the, the, the numbers. So I might do one and, and start that off for this parcel as a giveaway and whoever gets it can fill in the other dots with whatever they do if they can get some little tiny bits to fit in the dots and practice or when they feel confident enough but it'll just be a little starter project something to give you the idea of what can be done and even just something as simple as this so the rest of this again not huge amount of chop in here just a few bits um some got some color it's a bit matrixy um, it's got very limited color in it. Probably can't even see it on the camera. Uh, there's a piece that's got something half decent. Uh, just little end bits like that. So a little blue bar down this side. Nice black opal. So even if you get a, you know, half opal and continue it out don't just try and isolate that opal you'll have a too thin a stone make it a half half and then where you get a nice bigger pendant stone out of that and it's got some nice black opal in there actually i overlooked some of these bits and i've looked at it again going through it and i'm like i think you'd have more fun with a piece like this than i'm going to try and make money out of it um not not to say if you don't get a nice stone out of there it's not worth money because that's black opal that's as black as opal comes that piece just blue bottom end of the spectrum um so yeah a couple more bits uh bit of color something to play with something to just peel back more than what already has been and and see if you can maybe even get something even little carvings out of it bits for inlay um so this is a mixed batch of lightning ridge and the mukupiti my, my main fields um, some of it's a little bit cracked up, but for practice, you might try and, yeah, just clean up a few spots or just get used to playing with opal on the worst bits. You, you're not going to make any money and they're not worth anything sitting there. So if you turn into dust, awesome, whatever, as long as you learnt something doing that. Um, and I think I'll chuck a couple of rubs in. I uh, haven't done that yet, but that'll be a surprise and yeah just little tiny carving pieces might get a little specimen out of it. it's a bit thin but it's a nice color in amongst it even if you use that as the inlay um a bit of white opal it's a little bit of color there not sure if you get anything out but something to dremel and play with um some of it's just specimeny um Yeah, most bits have got colour in it anyway, except for the big chunks I said that won't. Um, and this piece, a bit of a carving project for whoever gets this. So it's got a bit of a thin two mil, uh, two mil uh, layer over it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna come up. There's a bit of colour in amongst it. So even if this was just 
polished up this side, leaving it on the host rock as a specimen and just see what you can get it to show up like as a bit of a practice project. It's on the cylinder shelf afterwards, so it's got some sort of aesthetic value at least as a specimen. So that'll be in there. And I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't wanna spoil too much of it or, or make it more than, sound more than what it is. But um, yeah, there's a few bits in there you'll have a lot of fun with, especially if you're new to this, which is what this is aimed at, guys. So professional cutters that are watching this, I'm sorry, it's probably not for you. Um, so there, yeah, I'm gonna figure out how to give this away as a, another thank you. Um, I'll have some other giveaway ones, but I like to post it with um, tracking and signature, so I'm assured that my stuff gets to you, and then it's your stuff for sure. Um, but if it goes missing in between, I don't like it just disappearing. Um, so I like to keep track of it with a signature, and that way, oh no, you've got it. Uh, so I'll do that with this one, but some of the other stuff I'm probably just gonna send a bit Standard mail, it's probably not even worth the postage it costs. Um, but I'll just put a couple of parcels together as a thank you. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out again how to do the giveaway. I don't wanna spring it on you and first in, first serve, cause that might be a bit unfair due to time of day and the global situation here with viewers. Um, some will be up, some will be asleep, and that won't be fair. So I'll think about that for now and get another video out shortly to do this giveaway and with some other stuff as a thank you. And once I've got a couple more parcels, I'll do that right now in a minute when I do all this and get them up. And then I'll feel more comfortable that I'm not just trying to show people expensive stuff. You're probably not too interested in at the moment being more interested into the cutting. Um, so I want to get something that's going to interest you guys. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got a big bag of stuff. Um, but as far as selling parcel parcels, I'm gonna to have to put some rubs in amongst it. So I'll have to find some stuff that's not just total beginner stuff that's valueless as such, but more, yeah, a couple of rubs that have something. Even if I do, I'm not sure if anyone's interested in the matrix. Um, rough. I'm not sure if anyone else is able to do some treating. Um, I'm gonna have a hard time parting with it because I'm gonna, I think I, I like this now. Slightly addicted to something else, at least it's opalish, but <laughs> branching out. I used to only like the glassy stuff, no porous or uh, treated or anything like that, no hydrophane, Ethiopian, I was just not into it. I just like the glassy polish and trying to get a best face as possible. But early last year, I was introduced to this as a parcel at a nice price and some great guidance. Thanks, Peter. And yeah awesome results so i will be doing more matrix from now on um but if anyone else is interested in any of that i'll i'll have some out um let us know in the comments i suppose um i just need to know how much i've got to prepare for i know this is kind of a global stage here and i don't want to just pop up with you know a, a couple of parcels and then they go in two seconds and everyone else is left wondering what's going on why can't i get some so Bear with me, I'm always gonna be trying to get this stuff out and online and next video I'll advertise or, or promote or introduce you to that site and just another thank you. So I'll do that all in one little video. Um, but yeah, I might end this video with a bit more of a, this view, <laughs> which was the uh, focus of today. Nearly lost that one off the side. So just again, give it a proper dry. They're probably going to weep a bit of moisture. Still yet until they totally dry out, so I'll have to leave them in the sun a bit. Oh, bear with me, I'm just dropping them. I'm trying to get that dry. There we go. So yeah, mucking around here. Some nice flashes. I'll have to pay more attention on the directionality next time with the rest of the stuff. Again, these were more test pieces, cut all different ways to see which way faces nicer. 
but definitely nice highlights and they'll make a great little pendineering set, I think. And I'll probably do some ring stones with these. They're a bit more even in coloration and that and thickness. I'd probably make a pair of earrings out of those two. I'll match them up a bit better than that before I do that. Um, yeah, another little ring. And yeah, we'll see about the other two. Maybe a ring, maybe a pendant. But great success. Um, I hope that this video kind of shows more than what well, it's more than what I've seen in other videos. I know that much. Uh, I've seen them and it just still leaves you wondering, yeah, but that little step in between or that part you didn't film or I want to see what happens when. So hopefully I covered a few more things here and you get a, a better idea of what treating's all about. So the other process other than what I did was once you've done the sugar, you, as I said, I think I said it earlier, you've got to basically carbonize the sugars in there one way or another. The acid does the carbonizing or you can put it in the oven and slowly cook it till it blackens. Just got to really keep an eye on it that way. Um, one way is a risk, the other way is dangerous. Um, <laughs> six one after no, half dozen the other for me and I don't really like working with heat and ovens. So not with opal anyway. So I thought the acid I'll go for and glad I did so yeah I'll stop rambling let this video end get this online so you can all see and I'll get another one out um, for the giveaway as a thank you yeah I can't believe I got 200 that quick guys you're awesome <laughs> wow and uh, yeah announce the store and how to visit it so thanks Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I'll see you shortly. Cheers.